Welcome, church, to our Sunday service. My name is Leonora Taylor, and I am one of the children's ministers at our San Jose campus. I want to share with you what God has been doing amongst our children in this season. God is doing something great during this time with our children by showing them the way He sees people. Every week we have what is called Kids Prayer Club. Here is where we gather together to pray for those people who have yet to hear the gospel of Jesus. Right now we are exploring different people groups and discovering God's heart for these people so we can pray effectively. What I sense God is doing is shaping our kids' worldview so they can see others the way He sees them. So please keep us in prayer over the next several months as God continues to shape the minds and hearts of our kids. The month of November is Missions Month, and we will kick it off starting November 8th with Chuck and Ingrid Davis. Right now, we are going to hear a story of a man from Cambodia and hear how the gospel of Jesus drastically changed his life and the life of others around him. I was a violent man, a drunk and evil man. I had no love for anybody. One day, I was working in an empty charcoal oven when the wall caved in on me and my little boy. I heard my wife cry out, Jesus, help my husband. I felt two hands grip my shoulders, and I realized that I was already outside the cave. I choked and coughed out blood. Then my right eye popped out of its socket. Immediately, my wife and a neighbor took me to the nearest hospital. Every doctor in every clinic said that they could not treat this kind of injury. I told my wife, you must take me to your church. I have no other hope. When we arrived, I asked the pastor to pray for me. As he prayed, I felt something from inside was pulling my eyeball to its place. And when everyone opened their eyes to look at me, I shouted, I am healed. I was overwhelmed with joy and in awe that God had healed me. After I got out of the hospital, my heart was restless. I could not stay still. I just wanted to go and tell everyone about Jesus. I often walked to distant places. I kept praying to God for clear direction. God, you have done so much in my life. From now on, whether I live or die, I am devoted to you. Where you send me, I will go. First, I shared in my own village. The people all knew what kind of character I was. After I came back, everyone was amazed by my healing, and they said that I was a different man. Some who saw the changes in me began to put their trust in Jesus. The workload was overwhelming to me. I cried out to God, I can't do this alone. Please send someone to help. When we came, it's just like so desperate need. We have not heard any church existing here. It's just like spiritual hunger. We met Kang on a boat ride. He's a natural networking person. Wherever his relative live, does the church exist? All he knew that go and share the gospel. Sometimes he calls us like, I'm here, I'm there, away from home. Talk to this person, that person. They received the Lord already. It's amazing. We told him that there's so many that we, we, we cannot catch up with him. God answered my prayer and sent you. I was so happy. My faith began to grow deeper. You are helping us understand God's ways. We cover three villages a week and do all day discipleship classes in that each village, including two floating villages. In the last two years, we've seen God's planted 12 Alliance Church groups and about 130 people came to Christ. This is our goal to see by year 2021 that in every village, every tribe, every town in Cambodia, to have a church, a place of worship for the people group. We plant churches because Jesus told us to go and make disciples. 
But it's in Jesus' heart for He care for the lost soul. And that's why we here follow Him. I am grateful to God for saving me, and I have committed my whole being to serving Him for the rest of my life. Nothing makes me happier than to see lost people find their way back into God's kingdom. Our God is a real God, not just a storyteller. Not yeah. just once upon a time story. Yeah, once upon a time story. <laughs> this is real, this is true, that His work in the life of His people. And He still does miracles every day. On November 14th and 15th, we have a special all-church event called Operation Shoebox Camp. We are partnering with Operation Christmas Child to send the gospel of Jesus to children and youth around the world. Here is a story of a boy named Kuala. We will get to see how a simple gift changed the life of this young man and his family. And then we will enter into a time of worship and hear from our pastor, Douglas. In a language, I to inquire and learn inquire. When I sang, I inquire and I pesa. I can't I can't believe I can't. I never can inquire. I try to inquire. I should be. I sang what I inquire and check. I sang when I inquire. I see never can. I inquire and I should be. I never can inquire. Ndamgana <laughs> I'm going to go to 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 Havi kumbana, wala havi kumpwari. It's science, kabitsi. Nipo fungu wala buku na zaadi. Nilikuwa na nilipata flas sana. Nika kumbuka kwa mamangu wala kwa naniambia. Nisikate tamaa, nipita subi la mungu wata kisaidi. Na kupitia, kupata zile vile viatu. Nikaza kupata mwe wakonda kanisani. Kwa mwe wangu, kwa mungu sa hivi. Kama nikia nipo nyumbani sina kazi. Kwa <laughs> Kwa kweli na mshukuru mungu sana kwa uwe mtu ambaye kama aliona kwa mba kuna mtoto ambaye na itaji la viatu. Atukuelewa ndana ya mokisi mungu kuna nini. Ingawa kwa mungine uliolekaa kama ni mdogo kwa mungu niliona mkubwa sana. Nika sema kika mungu wewe njiu na itinda mungu. This 
year, we are turning our Operation Christmas Child into a special all-church event called Operation Shoebox Camp. Join us on November 14th and 15th online. For more details, please see the family update. Jesus, we worship you. You are the eternally existing one, and you're worthy of our worship. He who was before there was life. He who was before there was life walked across the pages of time. He who made every
Hello, San Jose and New Vine family. It's so good to be with you and such a joy to see you on this Sunday. Hey, I want to thank you so much for the video appreciation uh, from last week for Pastors Appreciation Month. On behalf of the pastors and the entire ministerial staff, thank you so much for your support, your love, your cards, your goodies. Uh, we feel so blessed, so loved, and so appreciated. Uh, and it's such a joy to serve the Lord together in this family of ours. 
Over the last few weeks, we have been exploring what it means to be a spiritual community. Uh, we've been covering four things that set us aside uh, from any other community, from any other social club, what it means to be the body of Christ. Four things. The first thing was confessional, a confessional church called to live with no secrets, walking in the light, not just confessing to God, but confessing to one another, confessing to a few trusted individuals so that we do not have to live in lies or in secrets. A communal church sharing and being conjoined together as the body of Christ. What happens to you affects me and what happens to me hopefully will matter to you. A growing church, helping each other grow to the maturity of Christ, that we are not stagnant, but constantly growing and attaining to the personhood of Jesus. And then this week, a missional church, sharing in a common mandate and mission as the basis to why we gather every Sunday and each week. Now, the first three topics that we've covered thus far have to really do with our relationship with each other and with God, confessing, being in community and being conjoined together, growing in our spiritual maturity, all have to do with being the church together, living life together as a family of Jesus. Now today we are focusing on being a missional church. This fourth area on being a missional church really has to do with our relationship with those outside of the church. How do we represent the kingdom of God to the world? to those we interact with on a daily basis, our classmates that we see on Zoom, our colleagues, our neighbors, perhaps even some of our family members. What is God's calling or mandate or assignment for us as a church? What has God given to us as his bride? And what did Jesus teach his disciples to do after he rose from the dead and before he ascended into heaven? Now, before I get into answering those questions and into a few verses from the scriptures, I wanna read a bit from an excerpt taken from the book called Growing Strong in the Seasons of Life by Charles Swindoll. For those of you uh, from New Vine, you may remember me sharing this story with you previously. Just bear with me as I share it with the rest of our family in San Jose today. On a dangerous seacoast notorious for shipwrecks, there was a crude little life-saving station. Actually, the station was merely a hut with only one boat, but the few devoted members kept a constant watch over the turbulent sea. With little thought for themselves, they would go out day and night tirelessly searching for those in danger as well as the lost. Many, many lives were saved by this brave brand of men who faithfully worked as a team in and out of the life-saving station. By and by, it became a famous place. Some of those who had been saved, as well as others along the seacoast, wanted to become associated with this little station. They were willing to give their time and energy and money in support of its objectives. New boats were purchased. New crews were trained. The station that was once obscure and crude and virtually insignificant began to grow. Some of its members were unhappy that the hut was so unattractive and poorly equipped. They felt a more comfortable place should be provided. Emergency cots were replaced with lovely furniture. Rough handmade equipment was discarded and sophisticated classy systems were installed. The hut, of course, had to be torn down to make room for all the additional equipment, furniture, systems, and appointments. By its completion, the life-saving station had become a popular gathering place and its objectives had begun to shift. It was now used as a sort of a clubhouse, an attractive building for public gatherings, saving lives, feeding the hungry, strengthening the fearful, and calming the disturbed rarely occurred by now. Fewer members were now interested in braving the sea on life-saving missions, so they hired professional lifeboat crews to do the work. The original goal of the station wasn't altogether forgotten, however. The life-saving motifs still prevailed in the club's decorations. In fact, there was a liturgical lifeboat preserved in the Room of Sweet Memories with soft, indirect lighting, which helped hide the layer of dust upon the once-used vessel. About this time, a large ship 
was wrecked off the coast, and the boat crews brought in loads of cold, wet, half-drowned people. They were dirty, some terribly sick and lonely. Others were different from the majority of the club members. The beautiful new club suddenly became messy and cluttered. A special committee saw to it that a shower house was immediately built outside and away from the club, so victims of shipwreck could be cleaned up before coming inside. At the next meeting, there were strong words and angry feelings, which resulted in a division among the members. Most of the people wanted to stop the club's life-saving activities and all involvements with shipwreck victims. It's too unpleasant. It's a hindrance to our social life. It's opening the door to folks who are not our kind. As you'd expect, some still insisted upon saving lives, that this was their primary objective, that their only reason for existence was ministering to anyone needing help, regardless of their club's beauty or size or decorations. They were voted down and told if they wanted to save the lives of various kinds of people who were shipwrecked in those waters, they could begin their own life-saving station down the coast. And they did. As years passed, the new station experienced the same old changes. It evolved into another club, and yet another life-saving station was begun. History continued to repeat itself. And if you visit that coast today, you'll find a large number of exclusive, impressive clubs along the shoreline owned and operated by slick professionals who have lost all involvement with the saving of lives. Shipwrecks still occur in those waters, but now most of the victims are not saved. Every day they drown at sea, and so few seem to care, so very few. Now, brothers and sisters, I know this is just a story but I hope and pray that even as we've read and listened to this story, that this actually would never happen to our church, that we would never forget what God has called us as a church, as his people to do, that we would never veer off from this life-saving mission that God has called us as a church to do, that we would not solely focus on our own needs or think that it's just about us or about our enjoyment or about our own satisfaction. You know, Church, God's family, was never meant just to be a place where people gather for religious ceremonies, nor was it designed to be a social club where you get together with your friends and you kind of kick back and share life. Yes, that's, there is a social aspect of it, but it's not meant for us to maintain the status quo. You know, church is a living establishment. It's where we encounter the living God, where we grow close to him, where we can be transformed, and where it's a place where we can reach out to others and really share God's love with those that have yet to know him and experience the grace and love that we have received. Now, we know that our God is a missional God. God is a God on mission. Just as he sent his son Jesus down from heaven to earth 2,000 years ago into the world, he has really sent us as his church also on mission. I wanted to take a closer look at what Jesus, uh, how Jesus taught his disciples from the book of John. In the book of John, verse, chapter 17, verse 18, Jesus prays, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. This is the verse from this chapter where Jesus is actually praying for himself, for his disciples, and for all believers prior to being arrested. You know, he's praying to his Father in heaven and committing his disciples, all 12 of them, to be sent into the world just as the Father sent him down to earth. And then later we read in John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Now this passage, just a few chapters later, um, is after Jesus' death and resurrection. This is when Jesus first appeared to his disciples. Now you'll notice that in this passage earlier that the doors were locked as the disciples were cowering in fear of the Jews. And then all of a sudden, Jesus stands among them and gives them his peace and his presence. But he also says, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Again, a reminder for the disciples that they are to be sent 
out. They are to be the sent ones. Now this concept of being sent ones as his son or as his daughter rings true to you and me today. Even as his people, as his believers, Jesus is sending you and me out. As his church, he is sending you and me out. We are an extension, the hands and feet of Jesus to this world. We are supposed to be on assignment. You know, our being sent into the world is really rooted in Jesus being sent into this world. Um, as the church, we are supposed to carry on his mission to preach the good news to the oppressed, to preach the good news to the poor, to set the prisoners free. You know, one of the greatest joys of being a Christian is that Jesus actually chooses to include us in his mission of reconciliation and renewal in this broken and lost world. You know, he saved us so that he could send us. He didn't save us just so that we could be saved. Yes, that's part of it, but it doesn't stop there. He saved us so that we are meant to be sent out. He could have chosen other ways to save the rest of the world. He didn't have to involve you or I. You know, it says in scripture that, you know, if we remain silent, that even the rocks will cry out to declare who he is, to declare his praise. But the fact that he chooses to invite you and I to participate in his work, to join him in his work, to be his sent ones. It's really a privilege and a joy as his people so that we can experience his amazing work, so that we can see him work through individuals, so that we can see him work in our own lives, so that we can see him work in the lives of our brothers and sisters sent into your family sent into your neighborhood, sent into your schools, sent into your Zoom meetings, sent into your workplaces. To share what? Obviously to share him, to share his love, to share his word, to share his grace, to share his forgiveness, to bring his hope and encouragement to those that are downtrodden, to those that are fearful, to those that are weary, to bring his joy and peace to the brokenhearted, to, to really bring his presence the presence of Almighty God, the filling of the Holy Spirit to those that need a fresh or a new touch of Jesus himself. To be salt of the earth, to be light of the world. How are you influencing your world with Jesus' truth? Where are the places that God has given you an inroad to? Where are the places that God is sending you? You may not even realize that God has sent you out, but God has. He has uniquely placed you in your uh, exact place, in your exact family, in your exact neighborhood. He's sending you out um, to the world. And how is the Lord going to be using you? How are you an extension of Jesus? How are you an extension of his hands and feet? What assignment has he given to you? How are you living as a sent one? I think a lot of times we forget that actually Jesus has commissioned us out as his church. Or sometimes we may be reminded once in a while, oh yeah, we're supposed to be sent. But how can we live each day knowing that we are actually sent out by the power of the Holy Spirit to be the presence of God in the community? You know, another way to look at this is really we are also to be ambassadors for Christ. You know, our three kids participated uh, the last couple of years in our church's uh, kids adventure camp. And the theme for the last couple of years was being an ambassador for Christ based on 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. The kids um, memorized the, you know, uh, a paraphrase of the verse. We are ambassadors of Christ who carry the message of Christ to the world. And, you know, every day as I was driving our two older kids to school, uh, they would recite that verse and I would bless them to be an ambassador for Christ as they uh, went to school. And of course now with COVID, um, most schools are virtual. Uh, but, but today, even um, as Esther, uh, my first grader, uh, went back to her school for two days a week, we blessed her once again to be an ambassador for Christ, that she would carry the message of Christ to her school. We are ambassadors. You know, we are representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Do people even know that you are a believer? Do people even know that you are a child of God? Do people even know that you and I are representing the King of glory? 
how are you representing Jesus today? You know, people are watching. Uh, sometimes we may not even realize it. Sometimes we may forget. But especially in public places, people are totally watching. You know, there are times when I have to remind myself, oh my goodness, you know, people are watching. I, I have to not lose my cool. Help me, Lord, not to be impatient. Uh, help me, Lord, uh, to, to be a more courteous driver, not to have road rage. You know, but people are watching. How are we living? Um, how are we representing the king? You know, um, a couple of years ago, um, we um, moved into a, a, a new home, and uh, we had a, a lot of um, contract work done. Uh, we basically had to redo the, the hardscape and the landscape in the front and backyards. And, and then, um, you know, we worked with a subcontractor. And basically yesterday, uh, I had to call him again because uh, our neighbors and I, we wanted to uh, get some quotes on uh, repaving our driveway. And, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of looking for other people to help us. And, and so I called our old uh, subcontractor who did the landscape. And, and I, was, I, well, I texted him and I was like, hey, you know, hey, I'm the guy from Los Altos. You remember me? Uh, you know, I wanted to see if you could have a quote. And then he was like, oh, who are you again? And, you know, I gave him my address. And, and I was like, hey, I'm that, that Chinese guy that kind of like pestered you along the way. And unbeknownst to me, and I was really shocked, he said, oh, you're my friend, the Christian. And I was totally blown away. I did not expect that from him on the text. But I don't know what I said. I don't even remember our interaction that much. But somehow he remembered that I was a Christian. And I'm hoping and praying that he had a good impression of not just me as the nitpicky Chinese guy trying to get the, the hardest bargain, but really as a reflection of Jesus, as his ambassador, as one that has been sent out to, to work with him and his crew. But I was really surprised and really taken aback that he responded that way. And I, I wanna encourage you, you know, to really make a statement for Jesus, to really say, you know, I'm a believer, I'm a, I'm a child of God, I really um, am an ambassador for Jesus. And I know sometimes, you know, we say, well, you know, sometimes our actions speak a lot other than words, and that's true, and that's great. But sometimes it's okay to say, you know, I really believe in a God who answers prayer. And let me pray for you. Let me, uh, you know, share with you the hope that I have in Jesus. You know, another passage that we're all very familiar with uh, for the church is really Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. You know, we know it as the Great Commission, where Jesus, before he ascends into heaven, he says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, even as we're anticipating our missions conference month next month, um, you know, this whole concept of going and making disciples, baptizing and teaching them, it's part about being a church together, being on mission together, going and making disciples, baptizing, teaching, you know, not forgetting about those outside of the church, not forgetting about the lost, not forgetting about our neighbors. You know, how many of you during this COVID season have had a chance to get to know your neighbors better because they've been around more. Because maybe you're you know, talking yard to yard. Maybe you've been able to chat with them more. But I hope that you have been able to be a better reflection of Jesus to your neighbors. You know, bringing people to really the centrality of the cross and what Jesus has done to redeem us, to what Jesus has done to bring you out of darkness, to bring you into the light, how he has forgiven our sins, how he has given us hope, how he has come to seek and to save the lost and to really set the prisoners free. This is really the mandate that Jesus has given to us as a church, as his people, as his missional community. Now, as I was thinking about this whole concept of being sent ones and being a church who proclaims the good news of being those that make disciples, I started asking myself, well, really what prevents us from being missional? And I know a lot of times we know this in our heads. We know this theoretically. Um, you know, it makes sense. We know that we're supposed to be his witnesses. We know that we're supposed to share God's love, spread the good news, make disciples. But oftentimes, we forget, I forget, 
or we may think that it's someone else's responsibility. Or maybe it's for those that are more gifted, maybe it's for the pastors, maybe it's for those, that, those, those professionals, or, or, or maybe it's for you know, those that have a particular evangelistic gift, or those that uh, are more relational. Um, or perhaps another thought that I thought of was, you know, I think a lot of times we forget about the mission that God has called us on, because unfortunately we're so preoccupied by our own needs. We're so preoccupied um, about what we have to do um, that we lose focus on the greater mission, on the greater mandate that God has given to us. You know, we tend to focus just on ourselves or our families. Now, please don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying that we shouldn't take care of our needs. I'm not saying that we shouldn't take care of one another. We should, because that's part of being conjoined together. That's part of being a ligament with one another. Um, but it, again, it's not just merely about you and me, brothers and sisters. It's not just about your comfort, my enjoyment, um, my satisfaction. It's just not merely about making our church a safe lighthouse or a posh lighthouse where we keep others out. I think Satan a lot of times uses other things to cause us to forget about the true mission of the church. And a lot of times those things are our own needs. Yes, we need to care about our own needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters, but it shouldn't stop there. It needs to go beyond that. It needs to be an and. We take care of ourselves, we take care of our own needs, but we also take care of the needs outside of our church. We take care of those that are outside of the body of Christ. Now, the, uh, also the encouraging and amazing thing is, you know, as a church, we get to do this together. We are all in this together as a missional church. It's not just, again, meant for one or two. It's not meant to just for the mature believers or those that are professionals. None of us really are professionals. We're all in this together. We all share in the priesthood of believers. We're all children of God. We are all um, ministering together. But it's for all of us, and we get to do this together. As a church, as New Vine, as SJCAC, as a small group, as E Squared, as Supernova, with your family, with your physical family, you get to do this together, and you get to share the excitements, the joys, the, the prayer requests of, oh, you know, um, I'm, I'm praying for this friend. Will you join me in prayer? You know, this exciting thing happened. I was able to share about Jesus to my colleague or to my classmate, and, you know, this person has shown an open or my neighbor has kind of um, been really talking to me more about life and just about the whole pandemic situation. You know, being missional as a group, as a, a body, sharing in this mandate together, that's really what binds us together, that we're not in this alone. It's not just me, it's not just you, but we get to, to do this together. You know, I, Cheryl, um, in the last few weeks, um, uh, has joined in together with a sister from our New Vine community to start a, a new moms group. And it's really um, uh, exciting because, you know, she's partnering with this sister that she's never worked with before in leading this moms group on Zoom. And there are five of them, two of which are non-believers. You know, three of them are from New Vine, uh, but, but two of them, you know, they know it's a Christian group, they know it's a moms group, um, but they're not phased. And they're able to share their stories, they're able to, um, you know, to even uh, talk about God and to talk about faith. And, and it's really exciting to see what God is gonna do among these women. And, you know, and, and all it took was just an invitation uh, you know, to reach out uh, to, to people. And, and I think you'd be surprised, especially during COVID, how lonely people may be or how people really want to be involved or in a community of some sort. So I wanna encourage you that especially during this season, that you would be on mission together with us as a church, that you would be on mission together to really share God's love with those around you, that you would remember that you are a sent one, no matter where God has put you, that even today you would remember where God has placed you in your particular school, in your particular grade, in your particular role at work, in your particular family order, in your particular neighborhood or zip code, and that you would be asking God for opportunities to be on mission with him. You know, it's really God doing the work. 
He's just using and inviting you and I to join in. You know, we need to be praying that God would open doors, you know, for, for, for the gospel to go forth. We need to be praying that God would open eyes, that God would, would bring us to people who are already open, that are already curious about Jesus and really about how to have a, a, a relationship with the living God. Now, you know, we've talked about these four things about being a church, confessional, communal, growing, and missional. You know, we cannot really exist as a church that Christ intended if we only have um, one or two of these items and neglect the others. We need to really, yes, look in, but we also need to look outwards. We can't just say, oh yeah, you know, I'm good in one or two of these areas, but I don't think I need to focus on the rest. No, my brothers and sisters, we need to have all four of these aspects. We need to be confessional. We need to be communal. We need to be growing, but yet we also need to be missional together as a body of him, as a body of his, that we would not lose the mandate that God has entrusted to us, that we are the hands and feet of Jesus, that we are to preach the good news, that we are to make disciples, that we are to share the transforming power of what God has done in your life and in mine with those around us, that we need to be praying for opportunities to testify about his goodness, about his grace, that we would be praying for opportunities to say, hey, I'm a believer, I believe in Jesus, and he's a God who can answer prayer. So brothers and sisters, I want to bless you today. I want to invite you to join with us to be a missional church, to join with us to be a church on a mission for God, to reach out to our communities, to reach out to our neighborhoods, those places where God has placed you in your spheres of influence, that we do this together in partnership with each other, but ultimately in partnership with Jesus, that we would never forget why God has called us together. Yes, he has called us to himself, he has called us to each other, but it goes beyond just you and I. It really goes outward to the rest of the world. Join me in prayer as we reflect on being a missional church together. God, we thank you for just this invitation that you invite us to be the sent ones, that you call us to be your ambassadors, that you ask us and invite us to represent you here on earth, that as your church, as your bride, as your people, that you have placed us strategically wherever we are at. That even today, even after this service, that even as we go out, that Lord, you would grant us a name, that you would grant us opportunities, that you would grant us, Lord, people that we can be missional with, that, Lord, we can have relationships and build relationships and really influence them for your kingdom. Jesus, we pray that you would help us to look beyond our own needs, that you would help us to look beyond our own circumstances, that we would see beyond ourselves and even beyond the needs of our church, that we would see your kingdom purposes at work. Lord, expand our vision for you. Lord, help us, Lord, to show us how to be a missional people, how to live on a mission that we would not forget the calling that you have given to us, the mandate that you have given to us as New Vine, as SJCAC, that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus to proclaim the good news to those here locally and also abroad. Jesus, help us, Lord, that we would not forget that you've called us to be a life-saving station, that we would not be a comfortable social club, but that we would continue to seek to save lives, that you would be the one saving lives in our midst, that you would be the one bringing people to wholeness and fruitfulness, that you would be the one that is granting hope and renewal and healing and restoration and joy to those that are lost. Thank you, Jesus for your presence today. Father, we ask that as we move on from here, that you would grant us your filling of your spirit, that you would enable us to be your missional church together, impacting the lost world for you. Thank you, Jesus, in your name that we pray, amen. Oh.
to cry. 